Hi, I'm Jamie Hernandez, and this is The Ins and Outs with Mackie, a show about awesome gear and awesome people. We'll be bringing you musicians, engineers, podcasters, streamers, and sometimes the occasional Macoid. If you're new to the show, make sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite platform to get all the latest Mackie updates as soon as they are out. So our guest today is the founder and executive director of Women's Audio Mission, which is a San Francisco and Oakland-based nonprofit organization, which is home to the only professional recording studio in the world, built and run entirely by women and gender non-conforming folks. Her love for music and the recording arts spans 30 years as a songwriter, a composer, a recording engineer, and of course, a producer who's worked with everyone from the Pixies to Kronos Quartet to even Beyonce's band. As a WAM member myself, I am so honored to welcome to the show, Terry Winston. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Hi, thanks for having me. This is fun. So, um, well, before we dig into all that is Wham, let's start by getting to know you a little bit better. What are your beginnings in music and in audio? Uh, My beginnings were in music first. So I started as a professional musician and recording artist. Um, Yeah, I was signed to to Polygram way many, many decades ago. (laughs) <laughs> but toured a lot with the Pixies and the Throwing Muses. And oh, wow. that was kind of my uh, core group back in the day. Um, and then moved into a uh, recording engineer and producing because I'm trained as an electrical engineer. So I have this technical background and I was working with the producer, Lenny Kay of the Patty Smith group. And it was his idea. He was like, why are you should, you're like a natural as an engineer, <laughs> you're already an engineer. And I'm, and I didn't even know it was a job. I was just a musician and I didn't know. Um, and so then once I got into the studio, um, into professional studios, I was very hooked. So I was like, oh yeah, this is the perfect combination of my loves of both music and technology together. And um, that was the beginning of that love of that career. And you grew up kind of surrounded by that too. Your family, I, I believe your dad was also an electrical engineer. My father was actually a mechanical and metallurgical okay. engineer, and um, he had a lab that I spent an enormous amount of time in. Um, so I was very much surrounded by science and physics and technology and also music and art. And I was also surrounded by men. So I got very used <laughs> to uh, this environment. And I think that's what um, kind of made me examine it. Like, why was I so used to that? And why was it that way? Um, but at the same time, also wanting to recreate um, that support I had. Like I, I've, I was examining like, why are you so comfortable with technology? Oh, because my father raised me in this environment like you can do anything. And there was yeah. so much potential and possibilities in that and having that support. So Wham is essentially recreating um, that, that really technology fueled environment along with the support of you can do anything with this and, and get your music and message and voice out into the world. So um, that's kind of the genesis of that. That's, that's awesome. Um, can you spa- expand a little bit more on what Women's Audio Mission does? So Women's Audio Mission, um, we use music and media to attract women, girls, and gender nonconforming folks to technology uh, so they can amplify their voices and messages and projects. Um, And we do that in a pretty incredible environment. The only recording studios in the world built and run entirely by women. And these are just perfect environments to get people uh, introduced to and hooked into using technology, you know, for creativity and for art and for music. Um, And so we have adult classes uh, that now we're doing virtually as well. Um, And uh, classes for girls. We serve over 4,000 women and girls every year both in our studios and in schools, and now virtually. Um, And we also have conferences, WAMCON, that we do yearly to to reach women and um, girls. And then, um, of course, we run a professional recording studio that our graduates can get really um, important professional credits on, like I said, on some of these bigger projects, so that that can launch a, a freelance career. So that's essentially, there's many more things. We also have Local Sirens, a concert series that we run locally here in San Francisco. Um, But in a nutshell, that's what Women's Audio Mission does. I love it. Um, So, you know, while you were observing the need for for Women's Audio Mission, a lot of the interviews I read and and, and watched you speak, it's, it's a lot about women needing to see other women supportive. Can you, can you expand more on that and the importance of that? 
Sure. Um, when I started teaching, I, I was a professor for about a decade um, in sound recording arts, and and that's when I when I started teaching, I noticed how few uh, women were in our our program. But um, I was really ashamed of not noticing that before myself as a woman. You know, I was like, how come I didn't notice this? And it was because I was so it was so normalized for me that I had been surrounded by men my entire career. And didn't notice it. So it was really the students saying, why is this, Terry? Why are there so few women in this program? So that 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 started um, that question for me. And it led me to realizing that there were less than five. And that was a ballpark figure. I was being very generous, saying less than 5% women are in this industry. It turns out now, what, over a decade later, after we started, uh, USC Annenberg did the study. And it it comes to be two to three percent, depending oh, wow. on whether it's a recording engineer or producer. So um, we knew this 17 years ago <laughs> that it was much less than five percent. Um, and so, yeah, that's the need is it's a it's a, a really critically underrepresented uh, field for women and gender nonconforming folks. And if you think about um, being at the table for a production where all these really important decisions are being made, you know, what gets left in, what gets taken out, um, how do we say this? And there's no women or gender nonconforming folks there to, you know, to provide that perspective or that point of view, or, hey, maybe that's not a good thing to say. Um, that just seems criminal to me. Like, that's just a, a really a bad idea, right? Yeah. Um, and I think most people that are in production would would agree that you want to make sure that you understand your audience. And so if over 50% of the population isn't represented in your audience in terms of who's helping you create and shape that message, it's probably a bad idea. So to me, that's just, or that percentage is ridiculous. It, it, it just, it, it should not be that way. So that's the need, less than 5% women gender non-conforming folks in this industry, that's a huge thing to focus on. And then coupled with the fact that you've got a 70% decline in young women entering college STEM programs or science, technology, engineering, and math, those two things together are just showing a really bad trend, like very bad. Technology is such a huge part of our daily lives. And to have women and girls not entering those career paths just is, in terms of equity, a horrible idea. So we really want to focus on using music and media, something that everybody loves, to attract folks to technology so they get their power, they gain their power uh, from that and are part of the conversation. That is a great point. Uh, many people aspire to be rock stars and YouTubers and kind of like the face of, of the art, right? But there's got to be plenty of other open jobs available to developing technologies and recording in the studio, being front of house. I mean, what are some of these huge opportunities people seem to be neglecting? Oh, that's a great, I love this question. Um, there are so many ways that audio intersects with technology, especially if you're looking at uh, AV or audiovisual, um, you know, design, systems integration, engineering is a huge burgeoning field because everything is now connected, you know, via the networks. And so you need to have IT experience, audio experience, but at the same time, it's just a great and stable career path. Um, and then software development, obviously, because we're using so much software these days to do audio. Um, that's a huge, I, I, if somebody came to me today and it, with that experience, it would be very easy for me to get <laughs> on the phone and get them a job today. Um, I have a lot of people calling and asking, do you know any, you know, women or gender non-conforming folks in this area? Acoustics is also, I think under, you know, just underlooked, um, because it, it's not just what people think like uh, recording studio design or, or concert hall design, it's products. All of the speakers in cars, phones, computers, all, that, all of the technology that we use every day has some acoustic design in it. So there's a lot of acoustic engineers working at Apple and Google and Facebook and all of these places that are using technology. So. Um, yeah, there's just a ton of jobs it's that if uh, folks went down kind of a slightly different path or an adjacent path to audio, there's just a ton of opportunity in those areas, especially. 
And I love that um, you often say that there's there's really nobody holding us back. Like the people want women out there and they want all types of people out there now. What advice can you offer to people who sometimes feel the opposite of that? Well, I think that feeling of the opposite of, it, opposite of that is valid because that's an inclusion issue. You know, you can recruit folks, but if they don't feel like they belong there, I, I understand that completely. Yeah. Um, but the flip side of that is you're right. There's so many people that want to hire women, gender nonconforming folks, people of color. Um, definitely they want to. It's just a matter, I think, to kind of get over the hurdle of the belonging component, even though that's valid and should be changed, but yeah. just going for it anyway, um, I think is important. But I, I think the more uh, tangible skills you add you know, to your docket is always a great idea. There's like right now, I think during the pandemic is the perfect time to get some of those certifications like Dante, you know, certifications or some AV certifications, you know, Avixa or, or IT certifications, some networking certifications, adding those are just is a huge part or even some beginning programming courses, you know, can get you into a, a quality control job at a software company. Yeah. And it, so it's not, you know, most of them are free or pretty low cost, especially right now. And those would definitely lead to a, a, a career path that you may not have thought of that's, um, you know, really interesting, exciting. Um, I, you know, I didn't think I was going to end up doing what I ended up doing. So I'm kind of <laughs> glad I just said yes to things because it, I, the things I thought I was going to love, I actually hated. Um, I really thought I was going to like live sound and I did not. So, you know, you just find the, you, you know, be open-minded and, and try things and you'll find the thing you really love, I think. And that's why a, a group like WAM is just so important to, 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 you know, want to be a part of. And like you said, maybe you don't, you don't love the uh, first thing that you do, but at least you get your toes wet and you get to work with some professionals. You get your name in some big places. And I think it's really amazing what you all are doing for women. Um, speaking of the, the group of people that you have um, with WAM, WAM serves a population of 30 to 40% high school dropout rates. Is that intentional or has that group found WAM organically? Oh, that's, it's very intentional. Um, well, actually, let me rephrase that. It's intentional and it's or organic. Um, I think originally it was uh, some schools had reached out to us uh, and, and so that was organic. Um, and then from working with those schools, it became kind of a big part of our mission because we were like, this is great. These are schools that don't have anything. You know, these are communities that are, you know, kind of systematically prohibited from resources. And that's something we really want to, we want to provide that to the girls that need us the most, you know? So it's definitely now a part, it's a very intentional part of our mission. Um, you know, 92, no, 96% of the girls that we serve are low income and 92% are BIPOC. So it's, it's definitely, um, definitely intentional. Um, but it grew very organically. Like we started out, um, you know, serving one school and now we're serving three different school districts and 50 different school partners. So, you know, every day there's, you know, anywhere from one to three workshops, serving middle and high school girls every single day. So it's um, somebody's always out, well now, virtually <laughs> <laughs> working um, with girls. And that's a really, it, it, it's, it's better than caffeine. They're super <laughs> exciting to work with and have a lot of energy. And it's, it's great to see um, us be able to provide, especially during the pandemic, um, that support to just, um, not just the, you know, learning technology part and doing projects, but, you know, like a songwriting course where they get to, you know, express themselves when they're kind of having a hard time yeah. in all of this. So um, being able to support them and provide that space for them to express themselves and, and giving them that support is kind of an extra added piece of it right now during everything. What are so you've had a lot of um, experience with these young women? What are some of the technologies and resources you think they need more access to, um, or what are they asking for? You know, honestly, they don't. 
Um, they're open to anything. That's what's great. I think because, <laughs> well, I, because I think when you don't have access, it's hard for you to articulate because you don't know what your options are, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, so they don't necessarily know what is available. So um, the great part of that, the flip side is, is they love, so anything on an iPad, they love. Um, and I, again, these are folks, it's like 72% don't have access to that. So, um, you know, getting them to use any type of app to even, you know, like we, in fact, we did a giveaway with them. Um, Mackie headphones, right? They were went nuts for headphones. I mean, just they don't have access to headphones. So yeah. like to get headphones is like crazy important for them, you know? So that's like a huge gift. Um, but they're doing, they're doing everything from, you know, learning signal flow to, uh, you know, really analog style audio to using code wow. to make sounds and sound effects and drum machines and synths. Um, they learn electronics with little bits kits and building speakers with cups and things like that. So it's kind of the gamut of, you know, any type of technology they might run into. So they're learning Pro Tools, you know, they learn all different types of DAWs. <laughs> so they're Ableton, you know, whatever, um, all different types. Um, and, you know, again, these are middle and high school girls. So it's it a little bit different than our what we're using for our adults. But um they touch upon pretty much every everything from podcasts to songwriting, recording multi-track audio to uh, sound for picture. They create little soundtracks to cartoons and things like that. So all of that technology. And that's, they love microphones. That's awesome. So, um, <laughs> so how do young women uh, find you? Um, we actually... so. There, it's kind of two different pools. So the girls that are in girl, our girls on the mic program, the middle and high school girls, they we partner directly with those schools. So, um, and, but it's you know it's voluntary, obviously, but it's an after school program. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's fifty plus different schools that we partner directly with, um, and, and some organizations, um, and then young women. Um, and gender nonconforming folks or, you know, adults there, that's, um, that's been pretty much word of mouth or I guess social media, but, um, just with the virtual thing with women everywhere, just in three months, I think we served 3000 women just online virtually. So they're just finding us, I guess, through social media. Yeah. We don't ha obviously have a marketing budget, so, <laughs> so we're not, paying anything for marketing. It's, um, you know, it's a hustle, but we have a pretty large social media following for a nonprofit. And so I think they, they connect with us through that. I would definitely agree with that. Um, you, you mentioned Wham Everywhere. Can you, can you explain to our listeners a little bit what that is? Sure. So Wham Everywhere was our pivot, you know, when COVID-19 happened, when we shifted all of our adult uh, programming online. Um, and then, so that exists in two forms in live workshops. Um, and like you said, everything from Linda Perry on songwriting to, um, talking about all the different career paths to pro tools to, you know, other, uh, we just did a sound design workshop, um, which was great with Boombox Post. So all of those different things are live. Um, and then we also have on demand, uh, modules that you can, um, access on our website. So that's what we're calling Wham Everywhere. That was our pivot. And now it's, you know, we the audience has been so um, engaged and adamant that it's now I, we're probably going to end up calling it something else because it's pretty permanent. They've, <laughs> they've pretty much uh, the global folks. Yes. <laughs> it's over 50 percent of the audience is global. So um, they put their foot down and said, this is what we've been waiting for. We didn't know. Uh, this is what we've been waiting for. So it has to be permanent. So we now know like everything's going to have to be hybrid at this point, even once we get past the pandemic. I know that I was myself, I was so excited um, that you all went virtual because I do, I take part in, in, in a lot of these online courses and for people listening, you know, it's a great environment. It's a comfortable environment. You don't even have to have your camera on. You can just listen and ask questions and it's, 
it's a perfect place to get started. And, and like Terry said, you know, just kind of test out the waters with different things. You know, I've done, there's intro to synths and maybe just click on a class that you would never even think about, you know, take that chance. So yes, take a <laughs> chance. I love it. So um, Mackie and Wham go way back. Tell us about that relationship. Mackie and Wham go <laughs> to the beginning, like seriously, to um, right before, right when we built our first studio, we're now like on our fourth, I think. We had oh, a wow. really tiny, yeah, we had a really tiny one. Um, I guess that would be 17, six, maybe like 16 years ago. Um, but yeah, we've had, Mackie was involved from the beginning. Uh, we have a lot of Mackie gear. Um, we had a board member. We had a very, very active board member that's was part of the Mackie team. Um, <laughs> and I think my recollection is I was sending T-shirts to folks and like I think people in the factory were wearing Wham shirts. <laughs> I was getting these photos and I really loved like they would say our shirts are wearing out and I would send more shirts because um, I really loved that. Um, but yeah, everything from. Oh my, all of the headphones in our classes are Mackie headphones wow. and learning on the consoles, you know, the analog consoles, um, Mackie, con that's the way I learned. I think the first console I used was a Mackie console. So that's, it's a really easy way to, to teach uh, signal flow. So we definitely have one in our Oakland location that we teach on all the time because it's so simple to learn on that console. So all of it to the controllers, to speakers. We have Mackie speakers and um, we have a Mackie uh, um, PA system too. <laughs> that's that gets, awesome. Yeah, that gets, that's a portable, that gets used anytime we have like an event or something that, that definitely gets put out there. It also get used, it gets used when we teach um, live sound in small venues. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, our cool. Mackie, our Mackie uh, team is going to literally love hearing all of that for sure. Uh, we love. No, we're we're he, we've we're like we go way back, like before Wham. <laughs> <laughs> I go way. I don't even know how long ago that was. A very long, very very long time ago. That's awesome, Terry. So a lot of a lot of the issues I I, I think was common that I heard you say in other um, interviews I read. Was, was that you had a lot of great support from everyone and a lot of gear. It was more like just trying to find the place to house this wonderful gear that was donated to you all. Yes, that was the first, um, when we did our very first AES conference, we had a donated booth, AES donated a booth. And, um, you know, just people I knew or, or companies I knew were like, oh my God, you have to open a studio now. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that wasn't what I had signed up for, or, you know, I, in my mind, you know, I was just kind of exploring like, oh, a small club at city college where I was teaching, <laughs> not, not like building studios. And then it was like the first AES, we walked out the door with like $7,500 in audio gear that people like, here, we're going to give this to you and to show, take this. We want you to start a studio. And I was like, you know, and I think it's important for women to know these were men making yeah. this, you know, they were like, Terry, we want you to do this thing. And I was like, that's so cool. Look, okay. Uh, okay. And then <laughs> boom, it, it, it turned into a small studio, you know, like a 800 square foot studio. And then, um, we, we basically that building wasn't available anymore. And that, that forced us to purchase our studio that we're in now where we have two studios in San Francisco, and then we have a small one in Oakland. Um, so yeah, that obstacle was, we were basically not getting kicked out, but the, we were getting phased out of a building. We had all this gear at this point donated, um, and we were about to be homeless. And so it was, um, we had to raise $2.1 million wow. <laughs> very quickly. Um, and we had to have kind of an intervention with city agencies. We're very lucky that the city of San Francisco is a huge part of our journey. They were so supportive from the beginning. You know, we were just named the best of San Francisco, the best hope for the future of music because we've kind of altered the audio technology landscape in San Francisco and the Bay Area. And the city is very proud of that and has been involved in it. And, and um, yeah, so the, it, it was definitely a, a tribe. <laughs> It was a village. It took a village to make all of that happen, but we're very happy that we are stable and have owned these 
really beautiful studios that we can train folks in and have a have that stability um, so the organization can grow and do this in other cities. And you have a great team. Um, we've met some of your members who are just wonderful, wonderful goddesses. Um, how do you how do you find that that group of, of people that that back you guys up and that that do the the classes? Um, how was that group developed? Oh my God, Wham has a fabulous <laughs> team. Again, it takes a village. Um, I, we grew really fast. You know, we we were um, probably uh, just a staff of maybe f- five. Not that long ago, maybe like two years ago, we grew to seven and now we're at 14. Um, and we just have really great instructors, artists, instructors that um, for the girls and um, adult classes as well. And then we just have some really strong people on our leadership team that are just incredible. And we have a super strong board of directors, the, another 14 people that pitch in to fundraise. Um, but every, yeah, just really super expert People, you know, um, all of them, for the most part, are artists in some way, shape, or form. Um, so I think that's been helpful. But, uh, you know, we have great people running our events, great people in our education, you know, designing our curriculum and delivering the curriculum every day. Um, great people helping on the fundraising and development and business side. And, um, yeah, I... I It's funny, I was saying to somebody the other day who was kind of dreading going to work. um, And I was like, why are you dreading it so much? And they're like, oh, man, the people that drive me crazy. And and I just realized to myself, I'm so lucky that I actually (laughs) like and enjoy everybody on our team. And my I don't actually get to spend that much time with them. That's the so for me, I said, wow, that's I have the opposite. I'm kind of bummed because I don't get to. I, I don't get to spend that much time with them. And they're so funny and smart. Yeah. Um, and they just crack me up. I love the, in the meetings we have, they, they're just really have great sense of humor. So I'm, yeah, m- most appreciation for them. Shout out you know? to them. Thank you. Thank yeah, you to all, all of, of you. There's 14, so it would be a long <laughs> list, but they're all, um, everybody just really, yeah, kicks butt every day. I definitely have seen that for sure. Um, so what is the process for artists who want to go and record um, in your studios? The studio is operating as a, just a regular commercial studio. So anybody, you know, can um, come and book a session. Um, the, you know, the requirement is you have to use our engineers. And that's how we make sure that there's women and gender nonconforming folks on every single session are getting paid and getting credits. Um, so this is, you know, it's a career path for some of our graduates to get into studio recording, but anybody, ironically, I think it's like 60% of our clients are male. So (laughs) (laughs) they want that perspective. They need that perspective. No, they like it. I've had people (laughs) say, I mean, we've had some pretty, you know, big artists in there. Like I said, Chronos Quartet's been in there and Toro I, you know, when I talked to Chaz about it, he's like, yeah, it's just a great environment. So (laughs) I think um, the myth that like, oh, we only record women, it's totally not true. It's so like a lot of people really appreciate the different vibe that a studio run by women and gender nonconforming folks, what it brings something different to the table. And I think everybody appreciates it. We have so many huge audio books that are recorded there. So the publishing companies really like it and they're, you know, remotely uh, kind of connecting to us on these sessions, you know, from all over the world, from a lot from New York and LA and they like it. So it's just a, it's a, it's a different vibe. Definitely can understand that. Awesome. So being a WAM member comes with a lot of perks as well. Can you speak to some of those perks that, uh, for people listening who may be interested in joining? Sure. Yes. WAM membership. Well, first and foremost, it's just a fantastic community. I mean, the engagement, um, we're trying to create more engagement opportunities because we've seen how um, people are really hungry for that and take advantage of it when we do that. So we're having more and more networking opportunities that are free for members. Um, And so also there's, um, there's going to be right now, it's for everybody. But once the library gets built out more, there's going to be Um, free access to all our training materials. There's a a big discount on our classes. I can't remember what it is, 30 to 40% discount, I think, on the classes and the conferences. Um, 
And then there's a lot of free perks like magazines. Um, there's also um, a lot of um, access to some of the uh, career panels and access to those recruiters. So there's a lot of things um, around recruitment, I think, that are, are useful. Um, but I think the community is the biggest thing. It's just such a, I think, and I think you've witnessed it, but it's just, um, it's hard to describe. <laughs> it's, it's kind of exploded virtually. I, I don't know, the chat situation has done something to people because I think people that wouldn't normally um, engage directly with us, maybe because they're shy or afraid or something, but the chat has just blown it, blown the doors off of that. So they're just super, we're just getting great, questions and comments and ideas of things to do that we wouldn't necessarily have thought of before. So I think that community and they're helping each other and they're kind of connecting. And I think the thing I've seen most, um, oh, I forgot about our internship program, <laughs> which is a huge part of what we do. Uh, we do so many things that it just depends on what grant I've written is yeah. whatever I'll think about that day. But oh my God, our internship program is huge. Um, <laughs> and my, I guess why I was bringing that up is that a lot of the people that we've placed, we've placed about, I think now over 900 women in, in careers, wow. um, again, with places like Dolby and Pixar, um, Electronic Arts, all the different studios doing live sound in the venues in the Bay Area. But um, a lot of those placements have come from so, somebody that we already placed. And then they because they're part of that community, they'll say, hey, put this out to membership because I'm leaving my job but because I got promoted, but I want to bring somebody else in. And so then we bring another person in, and that's how we've made some really great headway. I think we've placed over like 20, over 20 at Dolby alone wow. um, and a, over a handful at Pixar, and then they recruit. The next member will recruit for the next person, so they'll call us up and say, hey, help us out. We want to find somebody here. So I think making those connections organically, um, I think there's a lot of placements we just don't even know about. Because I find out about them from somebody else. They're like, oh, hey, I got so-and-so <laughs> this job. And I'll be like, why isn't anyone telling us? We're trying to keep track of these things. So, yeah, it's um, that community, I think, is the biggest. Like, people feel a lot more confident being a part of that community. Well, thank you for putting that community together. I think this is well, a great time. One part. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think this is a, a great time to throw in some uh, fun, rapid-fire questions that aren't as serious. Um, are you ready it. for that? All right, sure. cool. All right. Um, I've kind of mixed in a few goodies, too, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit for you. So, Terry, what is your proudest, proudest accomplishment? My proudest accomplishment? Huh. That's really... I don't even know what my proudest accomplishment is. <laughs> I mean, Wham's probably my proudest accomplishment. Um, but I, there's a lot of different little things inside of, of that. But um, I don't know. It makes me happy. Wham's, Wham's my baby. Makes me very happy. That All was, of it. That was an obvious uh, answer. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I was like, if I don't say I that, what's going to happen? <laughs> what if I said, like, I don't know, my potted plants, which I don't even have. So I don't <laughs> All even, the like, Wham said, members are like... It, they'd be like, wait, what? What's, what is it? Is Wham <laughs> chopped liver to you? And I love chopped liver. So it is, yes, it is chopped liver. So you were talking about uh, unique uh, career opportunities that have been created for a lot of uh, people who have been Wham members. What is the most unexpected or unique career opportunity landed by a Wham member? I, I guess I would have to, unexpected for me would have been, um, we've placed a lot of people in the tech industry. So Facebook and Google, oh, that's um, awesome. that was unexpected. I didn't realize that. I didn't, and that's how I learned like, oh, wow. Yeah, there's all these <laughs> different, there's acoustics and then they're doing all this sound design. I didn't know they were doing sound design at these companies. <laughs> so I would say that, yeah, like placements into the tech industry and they're super pumped about it because, um, they kind of get to define their their uh, their job because it's kind of a new thing. So um, that's unexpected. I don't know if it's that weird or anything, but I think that's unexpected and, and a cool thing. And awesome. So what is a, a useless, I guess, talent that you have? Oh, my God. <laughs> I have so many useless talents. I doubt that. You know, <laughs> no, one useless talent that just came up uh, today, and I don't know how, I don't even want to explain how it came up in our staff meeting today was, I was a champion 
walking on your hands person when I was young, like young, like I could walk on my hands for a really long time. Like, I don't remember, but that I was is like awesome. the champion because I could do that for a super long <laughs> time. I don't know why I decided that was important, but, uh, that's a, a, a strange skill. Yeah. I don't, not everybody can do that. I don't know that I can still do that. I haven't <laughs> tried, but I used to, that used to be a very big skill for me. That's awesome. That's a good skill. So Mike, really, what can you use it for? It's absolutely well. That's why useless. it's it's useless, but it's a cool, yeah. you know, b it's a cool uh, bar trick. Well, I guess you wouldn't do it, it at a party, but like party party trick on some soft grass, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. My favorite experience with Wham has got to be that fireside chat with Linda Perry, where she wrote three songs on the fly, probably even more if, if I can remember. Um, what has been one of your favorite, most memorable experience you've had with uh, Wham or Wham Online? Oh, wow. I, there's a couple that are really, um, there's uh, many actually I get that are super emotional. Linda Perry's done a lot for Wham. Linda Perry's been at a bunch of our conferences and um, that's always a highlight. I've known her for a really long time and she's just like, uh, she's the real deal in terms of genius. Um, there's two things. One would be our local sirens, our concerts uh, was really, it was kind of emotional for me because we were bringing together um, communities that didn't have a place to experience live music because the shows were all ages and they were also, um, doing, combining genres that have not really had a place, uh, to exist together. So, you know, we were, we were combining like a whole hip hop community with, you know, like an indie rock community. And I think bringing those two together, it was, it was, um, just really wonderful to see everybody just enjoying this and the venue being packed and um, it just, it was such a rare experience and I, cause I've been to so many shows in my whole life and mm -hmm. I had never seen anything like that. That was really emotional to me that um, the kind of the power of bringing communities, different communities that don't generally intersect, um, bringing them together. Um, and then I think the conferences for me, both in person and online were, are hu were huge, uh, just again very emotional to see because people cry yeah <laughs> I mean the attendees at these conferences cry they will come up to me after crying like I don't I've never had any mentoring in my life you know except for today or like even online somebody saying that that was the best 24 hours of my life you know and I'm like this is crazy um that's I don't know. I get really emotional around that because it's just, um, yeah, just creating something um, that, you know, really resonates with people is it's just really fun to watch and be a part of. <laughs> I was talking to to a few of the guys about this at, at, with Mackie, but um, do you think it's time for Mackie to introduce a female counterpart to to Running Man? You know, it's funny. I don't know if you I know. Don't, our <laughs> uh, it, does ahead. Running is is does Running Man have a gender? Um, well, I guess it's running. Oh, I have my little little running man, maybe sh running person. Can Are we you ready tell for this? That I well, can't not really. If it looks, could is it possible? Here's what I would say. <laughs> if it's if it could be rebranded as running person, I love that. Then it it covers everybody. I love that. That's a great idea. So you know, is it gender expansive <laughs> running person? I like it. So what would be on the gag reel of your life? That's the moment where everyone bursts into laughter. That's like a daily experience. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Uh, I don't know. I've screwed up so many things in my life. <laughs> it's like publicly it's led you too. a long way, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, the gag reel would probably be just... Um, I think probably the funniest thing that people experience is, you know, I'm an introvert, so when... I'm done in terms of my interaction with people. It's really obvious. Like I just shut off and they, everyone thinks that's pretty hilarious to watch because I can't control it. Like once I'm completely spent, <laughs> uh, I'm just like done. And yeah. they're like, oh, she's done. She's done. Get her out of here. So <laughs> I just like I if all my energy is drained, um, that would definitely be a part of the gag reel is when I'm done, I'm done. The other <laughs> would be that I can't handle alcohol. So you, that would be in the gag reel of like, oh, she's had half of a <laughs> margarita. She's out. She's slurring her speech. She's, she's done. 
That's with awesome. that. Um, or the many times I've probably screwed up public speaking or any of those things or all the fun zoom accidental zoom moments i'm sure we've all encountered (laughs) during this time off oh my god yeah (laughs) last question who would play you in a movie of your life who would play me or who would i want to play yeah who who do you want to play you in a movie of your life okay well if i had my choice of all human beings i'd probably want patty smith to play me in in a movie because i don't know wouldn't that be awesome that would be awesome Um, who would play me? I don't know who they would cast. I have no idea who they would cast as me. I, they would have a hard time. I think they would be like, oh, shit, what do we do? What, who who could we get to do this? You'd have to um, play you. There's only one Terry Winston. That's you. They broke the mold and, yeah, I don't know what happened. I mean, my parents are like, my mom especially is like, we don't know what the hell happened with you. So, anyway, that's good or bad thing. It is what it is. But, yeah. Well, we all love you, and we're glad you are here and you are the way you are. So thank you for everything, Terry. Do we have anything to look forward coming up with Wham! or anything extra that you want to add that maybe we didn't cover in our interview earlier? WhamCon is coming up October 23rd and 24th. Yes, that would be the next thing. It is definitely the next WhamCon. Super excited. Great lineup. So tell us a little bit about WAMCOM. I don't think we really dove too much into that, but what can people expect uh, from WAMCOM? Yeah, WAMCOM, well, usually it's in person, and we usually do it at some pretty iconic recording studios or production spaces. We've done it at Capitol Studios. We've done it at Oceanway in Nashville. We've done it at um, Jungle City, Alicia Keys' studio in New York. We've done it at Disney Animation Studios before, and then, of course, with COVID, we've We've gone virtual, but it basically um, features just the absolute best engineers, producers, uh, beat makers, songwriters in the world, um, and is a way to connect our membership to them directly for, you know, both workshops and training, but also mentoring. Um, So this next WAMCON is online and virtual. as I said, October 23rd and October 24th. And um, so far we've got um, the artist and producer, Suzy Analog, um, the mix engineer, Gloria Caba, who's worked with everybody from Beyonce <laughs> to Madonna. We've got uh, Jet Galindo, who's a um, mastering engineer at the bakery and worked with folks like Weezer and oh, wow. uh, Barbara Streisand. She does a lot of vinyl cutting. Um, and then we also have the really great songwriter, AG, Adrian Gonzalez, who um, has worked with uh, Christina Perry, um, also has a lot of uh, placements in um, like The Handmaid's Tale. I want to, oh, Grey's Anatomy. So she's got, she's just a just like, real badass yeah. producer and songwriter. Um, so that's so far who we have confirmed. Really excited about that. And we have some surprise guests for Friday, which we're, ironing out as we speak, actually. So that's going to be a really cool, another cool um, two-day experience for everybody. And uh, last time, I think we had about 350 women in gender non-conforming folks wow. joining us from all over the world. So that's awesome. excited about that. Well, thank you so much, Terry. It's been a joy sure. and an honor to have you here on the ins and outs. Um, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. We love Mackie, so I'm happy to be here. We love you too, Terry. So again, this is the Ins and Outs with Mackie, a show about awesome gear and awesome people. We'll be bringing you musicians, engineers, podcasters, streamers, and sometimes the occasional Mackoid. If you're new to the show, make sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite platform to get all the latest Mackie videos as soon as they are out. Until next time, Mackoids. It's the end.